If you're a student heading back to school this fall and you're looking for a laptop for your creative needs, then you found the right video. Whether you're a designer, photographer, video editor, digital artist, 3D modeling guru, or you're an architecture student, this is the video for you. I'm gonna help you understand the specs and give you some examples of some laptops that you could purchase to fit your exact use case. Now, if you're looking for a deal, nobody does deals quite like the sponsor of this video, that's Best Buy. Best Buy is currently running some great sales on laptops for video editors, designers, artists, photographers, and architecture students. Not only can you catch a great laptop deal, but furnish your living quarters with the latest creature comforts in the the tech domain. Maybe your housing is a little farther than a short walk and you've had your eye out for some quick transportation. Best Buy even has some electric scooters and bikes on sale right now. If you catch this video after the sale ends, there's no need to fret as Best Buy is constantly providing some of the best laptop prices on the market and with two day shipping on thousands of items and same day pickup for thousands more, Best Buy makes it easy to start creating faster. Use the link in the description below to head on over to Best Buy buy.com right now to pick out your creator tools. Now the first category we're gonna jump into is graphic design, digital art, and photography. And as you can see, we have the four categories on the left side of the slide, looking at the CPU, central processing unit, graphics processing unit, random access memory, RAM, and then of course the storage. And I'm gonna talk through each of these components for each of the categories in this video. First and foremost, looking at graphic design, digital art, and photography. This is an area where you don't need a super powerful laptop, but you don't need anything too crazy like a gaming laptop if you're just sticking to these creative needs. If you're somebody who's gonna be maybe doing some motion design and video editing along with this category, then I would push you towards the video editing category here in just a minute. But if you're just strictly doing the tasks and using the apps that are shown in this category, then you'll be fine right here. First off, the central processing unit, you wanna look for a U-series, P-series, or G-series processor. And you wanna have that above the five. So what that looks like here, you can see in the example, the i5-1235U or the i5-1240P, those are from Intel. Now in the Ryzen category, you're gonna to wanna to look for something like the Ryzen 5 6600U or the Ryzen 7 6800U, or maybe if you're going for a last year's model, you could look at the Ryzen 7 5700U. Really, I think Ryzen 6000 versus last year's generation, the Ryzen 5000 for graphic design, digital art, and photography, there's not a big difference. So you could actually save a little money by not getting the latest generation, unless you're gonna be doing video editing. And we'll talk about that in the next category. So my top recommendation for laptops in the budget category are gonna be on this laptop line up here with these type of specs. Now, if you find something with similar specs, then I would say it could be a great purchase. But these are just the examples I have listed to give you an idea of this price category and what you can expect to spend. Now, do you need a graphics processing unit? No, you do not. It is categorically unnecessary. Now, categorically, in graphic design, digital art, and photography. If you're moving towards video editing, that's a different story. We'll talk about that in a second. But no, you can be simply fine with Intel, Iris, XE integrated graphics that come on the CPU, or for instance, the Radeon graphics that come on the CPU. Now, as you see, this last laptop has an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Max-Q, and that is a graphics processing unit. So that is something that has a dedicated processing unit for your graphics. And really graphics are more of graphics in motion. I do not consider graphics to be the still graphics say in Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator when in reference to a graphics processing unit. To me, it needs to be renamed, but it's probably not going to be to like maybe a video processing unit, you know, things that are in motion rather than things that are static because it confuses a lot of graphic designers. Well, I'm doing graphic design, don't I need a graphics processor? But no, you do not. It's for the graphics in motion. That's where it really gets its heavy use case. Now you will gain a little bit of performance inside of Photoshop by having a graphics processing unit because there are tasks and functions in Photoshop that benefit from it, but it will not be a sink or swim situation for you. Now, these are more of the entry level computers for graphic design, digital art, and photography. Here on page two, we have more of the advanced laptops that would give you a little bit more performance. Something like the Acer Swift 3 is a great buy with the i7 1260p and also the Acer Swift X14, which has the i7-1260P, but also a graphics processing unit. So if you were doing 
you know, more intense work inside of Photoshop, or if you're doing some light video editing, this would be a great buy. Now you also have the Asus Rogue Flow X13, a fantastic laptop that has a lot of great performance because it has a high-end Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor, got a lot of performance behind that processor, as well as a dedicated GPU. So if you're somebody moving towards motion design and video editing, this, these two laptops would be great picks or laptops of this similar configuration. Also the MacBook Air M1 and M2 are great and the MacBook Pro 13 M1 and M2. For graphic design alone, you'll be fine with the M1 on both of those laptops. If you're gonna be moving into more video editing, I would lean you towards the M2. Now, before we move on, let's do a quick explanation of what these processors are just so we don't leave it unturned. A U-series processor stands for ultra low power. So basically these are laptops that are gonna have low power draw. So they're gonna be great on battery life, but they're not gonna be able to hold a high of frequency when doing tasks inside of apps. So what I mean by that is a lot of these CPUs can boost up to a frequency speed that gives you a lot of speed and snappiness in your laptop, but they can't hold it as long like their H series older brother CPUs that you may find in gaming laptops, these thick chunky laptops with big fans and big dedicated GPUs. Also, same thing with the P series. That's simply a new classification for Intel. You will not find P series CPUs from Ryzen, only Intel. G series is also an Intel thing. G series is kind of the older P series they took G-Series, kind of built upon it with their newest iteration of their CPU platform, and now we have P-Series. Intel is the master of confusing CPU SKUs, so just stay above i5, in my opinion. I would lean you towards P-Series or G-Series, and personally, I would honestly stay away from U-Series unless your budget just doesn't allow you to get into those. For Ryzen, you're going to have only U-Series CPUs for the ultra-low power. They keep it really simple with just H-Series, HS-Series, and U series. Now H series is gonna be their high performing processor and HS is gonna be kind of their hybrid. And then the U series is gonna be their ultra low power. So as you see here, the HS series processor on the Asus Rogue Flow is kind of their hybrid between. So this gets great battery life, but also has great high performance, but doesn't have as much of the low thermals and even better battery life is say a U series processor. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to bring it down to the base level. And if you have questions, definitely comment below. Either myself or somebody in the community would love to answer those for you. Now, the random access memory or RAM, this is very important for graphic designers, digital artists, and photographers. It often gets overlooked because people are looking at, you know, the processor. But RAM is very important because every time you open a program, you're using RAM. So let's say you open a Google tab and you're now browsing the internet. That's gonna use anywhere from two to five gigs of RAM. Your actual system, you know, the, the computer itself, is going to run about one to two gigs of RAM when you just open it. So right there, you're already almost eating up all eight gigs of RAM before you even open a design or photo or art software. So that's why I recommend 16 gigs as a minimum because you're gonna eat up your RAM really quickly, especially if you want to have multiple programs open at the same time. So 16 is my recommended. And if you really want to be fancy and have a lot of multitasking capabilities, I would get 32, but most budget friendly laptops are anywhere from eight to 16. Now storage, uh, most laptops these days come with solid state drives. So all the information is stored onto a non-moving part just reads and writes straight to that cell. Whereas with a hard disk drive, it's a disk that's spinning. Then you have an eye that's hooked onto a mechanical arm that's actually reading that disk as it's spinning. They're slightly more unreliable. Um, they're a little bit slower. And so the SSD solid state drive is just the better bet. All right, let's move forward now to my video editors in the audience. We're looking for laptops with H series and now P series processors. Now you can get away video editing on some of those graphic design, digital art and photography laptops if you're doing 1080p. But if you're moving up to 4K, keep in mind that you're gonna wanna get an H series or P series processor. Now the one thing is when it comes to the P series processor, this is the first time that I've ever recommended a ultra low power processor for 4K video editing. This year, Intel has really stepped it up with these processors. I think they are fantastic. However, if you're somebody who's gonna be doing a lot of 4K video editing, a lot of multiple files on your timeline, motion graphics, music, B-roll, the like, I would recommend you to go with that H-series processor just so you don't feel bottlenecked with the performance of your computer. So right here, this is more of my kind of entry-level budget uh, spot for laptops for video editing, starting with a Dell G15 Gaming. You're gonna be looking for something like the Ryzen 5 5600H or now 6600H 
or even the i5 12500H from Intel. That's a great CPU um, for entry level. Now, moving up to the HP Omen, you're getting a little bit more flexibility in your budget. You got that i7 12700H and the RTX 3060. The 3050 has four gigs of VRAM. The 3060 has six gigs of VRAM. So you're just gonna have a little bit more performance out of that 3060 GPU. Uh, then you move on, of course, the Lenovo Yoga 9i. This would be a great ultra low power, on the go friendly, light 4K video editing laptop. And then one of my favorite laptops of the year right now is the Asus Rogue Zephyrus G14. Has a fantastic processor, the Ryzen 9 6900HS. And you can get it in both the RX 6700S and the RX 6800S. And actually when I last looked, if you're watching this video at the time of posting, the RX 6800S is actually on sale, which is pretty sweet. You can get a little extra kick out of your GPU with that one. And then these all have 16 gigs of RAM, except for that Dell G15 Gaming. If you get that laptop with eight gigs, I would definitely recommend it upgrade to 16 or 32 when your budget allows. And that's one thing that to keep in mind, the gaming laptops are often able to be upgraded. The Ultrabooks usually come unupgradable. Like when you get them, you just, you're stuck with what, you know, the RAM is. So keep that in mind. Now, before we jump into the more expensive examples, let's talk about the GPU. Very important for 4K video editing when you're doing a lot of it. It'll just help lift off a lot of that load from the CPU. Uh, it's gonna, sh the CPU is gonna share all that graphical information with the GPU. It's gonna process it much faster, especially if you're using 6K footage. If you're shooting B-RAW or RED footage or any other 6K codec, you're gonna wanna be using a dedicated GPU. As far as random access memory is concerned, RAM, you're gonna wanna have a minimum of 16. I'm not, I don't wanna recommend anything less than 16. That's why I said you should upgrade that G15 to 16 or 32 when your budget allows. It'll just be a huge bottleneck to you. 32 gigs would be my recommended because it'll just give you a really nice ceiling for video editing. And then of course, solid state drive is my recommended for video editing as well. The Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus M16 is a killer laptop and actually comes in at a great price point in my opinion for that much performance. You have an i9 12900H and an RTX 3070 Ti with eight gigs of VRAM. It is a beast of a laptop. The Legion 5 Pro and 5i Pro have been one of the best laptops of the past few years. They just have so much performance. They're so well optimized. They're a little on the chunky side. I reviewed the M16 versus the 5i Pro and I you know, kind of showed that the M16 is a little more designed in a simplistic way. The 5i Pro is a little more gamer, a little more frills and a little bit of extras. So you just kind of got to pick which one you like better. We have the Lenovo Legion 7 and 7i Slim. Another one of my favorite laptops from last year. Great performance, really on the go friendly. Just really can't beat it. And then if you're an Apple fan, the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch um, with the Apple M1 Pro or M1 Max CPU. Both are good, a little more expensive, but because you're getting into the Apple ecosystem, that is why. Now, one thing to point out, the reason the Apple MacBook Pros are a benefit would be that you can run full power, as in full performance, while on battery life. Now, what happens with these Windows laptops here? Let's say something like the M16, right? So you have the M16, and if you're not plugged into your charger, you do not get the full performance capabilities of this laptop. It will drop you down, it will throttle you to a lower set of performance standards automatically in the system. You cannot get the full performance of the GPU and the CPU out of this laptop without being plugged into power. So with the MacBook Pro, you can be untethered, getting full performance out of your laptop and getting great battery life. So that's one of the big differences. Um, these Windows laptops need the power coming from the power brick to run full performance. So just keep that in mind. It's one of the big benefits that Apple has going for them right now. Now, next we're gonna look at architecture and 3D modeling laptops. Let's jump right into it. I definitely think you should get an H series processor. There's no question about that, especially for 3D modeling programs. There's a lot of heavy lifting that takes place. And if you're gonna be doing a lot of After Effects work, you definitely want that H series processor. It just is not gonna cut it with a P series, G series, or U series for After Effects. Now, looking at the graphics processing unit, the GeForce from NVIDIA or the RX from Radeon are gonna be good. They're gonna be really good for say Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo. However, if you're gonna be getting into Autodesk Revit or SolidWorks, you might wanna consider a Quadro Workstation GPU from NVIDIA, something like the RTX A1000 or maybe the T500 or the P1000, one of these specifically attributed workstation GPUs. The reason is products like SolidWorks and Autodesk Revit are optimized and partnered with NVIDIA to make sure that the GPUs run 
their softwares in an efficient and correct manner. They integrate with them. So they're sending information back and forth to make sure they're optimized. They actually go as far as some softwares don't even give you customer support if you're not using a workstation GPU. So just keep that in mind. If you were gonna be a major SolidWorks or Revit user, you may wanna fork out a little bit of extra money to make sure you have a workstation certified GPU. Now up in the list here, we have the Gigabyte Aero 16 i7-12700H and RTX 3070 Ti. Fantastic pick. So something around this type of build will be killer for 3D modeling. You can get down to the RTX 3060, but honestly, if you're gonna be focused on 3D modeling or architecture, I would not go below the 3060. I would stay above the 3050 Ti. I'd stay above four gigs of VRAM. I would start at six gigs of VRAM and work my way up personally, if your budget allows. Next up is gonna be the ThinkPad P1 Gen 5 that comes with the i7-12700H. And you got a range of choices from the RTX A1000 all the way up to the A4500. So just keep that in mind, that's gonna be a pretty expensive laptop, but these workstation laptops, specifically when you're getting a laptop for 3D modeling and architecture tend to be more expensive. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. You can get away with a gaming laptop, like I said, but you just won't have as much performance as maybe using a workstation laptop. Looking at the ASUS ProArch StudioBook 16, this would be a killer laptop. It is not a workstation GPU, but it does have the RTX 3080 Ti and an i7-12700H, which is a beast of a laptop. And then lastly, the HP ZBook G9 Studio. These are probably the most expensive laptops that you can buy for 3D modeling and architecture. They have a ton of performance. They are workstation certified for a lot of the main 3D modeling and architecture apps, but they will put you back a pretty penny. So if you're on a budget, go for an RTX 3060 with say an i5 or an i7 or a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7. And then if you're you got a medium price point, look for maybe an RTX 3060 or 3070 Ti. If you've got a lot of money behind you, maybe that RTX 3080 Ti would be great. And then if you're like, I wanna be certified, keep an eye out for those P-series, T-series, and A-series GPUs so you're workstation certified. That'll kind of run the gamut of price points for you. Maybe you can find one as low as $1,500 for maybe a P-series or a T-series GPU, and then all the way up to five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 for the high-end A-series GPUs. So that'll give you the range. Now, as far as the random access memory is concerned, 16 gigs is my absolute minimum. 32 is a great sweet spot. 64 would be fantastic, just to make sure you have enough ceiling for all the apps that you're running. If you wanna go snag some deals right now, bestbuy.com, links in the description below. They're running a back to school sale. You can't beat the deals at Best Buy. And even if you're watching this video after that specific sale is over, keep an eye on Best Buy. They always have fantastic sales over on their website. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.